Hi guys, it's Antoinette the Confident Woman and welcome back to my channel, your one-stop source for confident living. Now, if you're new here, welcome. Consider subscribing if you like the content just to keep up to date with all the videos that I'm putting out. And today we're gonna to talk about money. Yes, we are. I thought since we're talking about investments and properties and all of that in line with this, I might as well put this video out there and bust some myths that y'all have about money. Now, the first myth that needs to be debunked is that finances are complex and anything to do with finances, monies, all of that. You don't have to be a maths guru to gain a basic understanding of money and how it works. If you begin to tell yourself that this is something that's necessary for me to know, it'll become a lot easier for you to open up towards understanding it. And I hated maths. I hated anything to do with calculations, anything money-based. I didn't really enjoy it at all. And because I didn't enjoy it and I don't like it, I don't, I couldn't care less basically. And I didn't try to understand it. I didn't try to learn about it. And yeah, but the more I've learned about it, the more I've realized that it's not as hard as I thought it was. And just having that basic knowledge, like I said, is so crucial for everyday living. I feel like the institutions make it look complex in order to keep people out. But if you kind of debunk all the jargon around it, knowing money and understanding it is so simple. Once you've got your head around it, once you've fully grasped it, you can soar towards making your finances better or having or making better financial decisions, which will help you overall in life. And the second myth that I think needs to be debunked is the issue of entitlement. I call it an issue because more than ever, it has become an issue in the society that we live in. If you carry that mindset around with you, very little is gonna get done in regards to you building for your future. My mindset now is that no one, and I mean no one, not my parents, not the government, not institutions, not employers, nothing. Nobody owes me anything. The only person I'm depending on is God, only person. Nobody owe me nothing. And I think that kind of forces you, pushes you to doing what you need to do to help yourself and not trying to depend on the government and not getting upset when the government bring out this, that and the other because you know that, you know what, I wasn't depending on them before. Regardless of what we're doing, we're not gonna build our lives around this world system or its economy. I mean, don't put your financial power in someone else's hands, basically. Number three, yes. The third myth that needs to be debunked is that you need to get into debt to get by or to get rich. Like, I mean, hello, can you not see how incredibly dangerous this mindset is that you need to get into debt to get by? You have to do everything in your power to try and live a debt-free life. You need to walk towards getting debt out of your life because it's the most liberating and freeing thing you can do for yourself and for your future. Why should your children have to go to uni and come out with a load of student debt? Why? Why can they not go to uni and come out debt free and have a better future ahead of them without having to think of how they're going to pay off their student loans? And you see everything around us sells this lie that Debt is great, debt will help you get to where you need to go, but how do you intend to reach your financial goals if you're carrying on in that cycle of debt? It just doesn't make sense. And most wealthy people understand this and get far away from it. I've said it before, cut up your credit cards, shut your overdraft limit. Don't buy a car you can't afford to drive because you wanna be doing Joneses. I mean, go shopping with only cash, meaning just leave your debit card at home, leave the cards at home, take the cash that you know that you need if you can't control your spending. All of these habits will help you get out of debt. Do what you need to do now so that you can live the life that you want to live later. And these things, they are basic, they are simple, they are common sense. But we prefer to impress others than help ourselves and help our future. The fourth myth is I don't need to think about my future now. So when are you going to start thinking about it when you're 60? You need to start now and I think this mindset or this myth is what prodded me to doing or starting the whole investment series that I've started to do. I think a lot of people think I've got time, I don't need to start saving or investing now. Besides, I don't have the money, all of that. 
just a lot of excuses i think the earlier you start the better start small start where you are with the little you've got just do something and also plan for the unexpected said this before you need to have emergency funds for when situations come up or arise that are unexpected you can't depend on okay well i've got my credit card the credit card will help me out what the credit card that's going to get you back into debt like or get you into further debt so guys get your saving caps on do what you gotta do do what you got to do the fifth myth i want to address is i earn too little to save now this is only really applicable to a minority of people that are working and the easiest way to save is to put the money aside before you even spend it set up a direct debit set up something so that as soon as that money that salary whatever comes into your account bam it's gone saving you can't see you can't touch it that's the best way to do what you need to do start now it's not when you're rich that you're going to start saving or investing no you need to start now so that you can get there so get rid of that mentality that you're going to start saving when you're rich because you won't if you get money on your hands now and you have that same mentality all you're going to do is spend the money because you haven't trained yourself and you haven't got the discipline to save money you're not going to save money when you get money you need to start now start where you are so you can prove to yourself that yes i can do it and guys money grows it compounds so the little that you think is a little now it will become a big little later on or does that make sense a big little a little big a big little it will become big just start start okay just start the sixth myth that i want to bust is that rich people are tight or greedy and the older i've got the more i've realized that this could not be further from the truth for majority of wealthy people i have come in contact with they are incredibly generous you see in society ignorance speaks the loudest people that aren't in the know will always open their mouth wide wide especially when it comes to prejudgments and criticism about other people and their coin. But you see, a lot of people that have a lot of money generally tend to be the biggest givers. And yes, there will be one or two exceptions, but generally, and I'm saying generally, they are very generous people. And this isn't because they feel that they need to give back. This is something that they've been doing from the very start. It's ingrained in them. It's a way of life and a living for them. Many of them started giving very generously even before they came into money. So think about that, guys. It sounds counterintuitive, but being generous and giving is actually one of the ways that money just comes to you. I don't know how it works, don't ask me. I ain't God. There's this big shift in the public's attitude towards money. This shift is not good because it's actually making people a lot poorer. And I'm not just talking about poorer in finance, financial terms. I'm talking about poorer in their minds as well. And there's this perception that all wealthy people got to where they are because they cheated the poor or the rich must pay, pay their fair share. Like fair share of what? If they've legitimately worked hard to get to where they are and have what they have, why are they paying, paying a fair share? That statement, I feel, is just like another way of the system getting people to go along with their agenda to kind of get their hands on people's money. Look, guys, people perish for lack of knowledge. Get to know who the real enemy is and i can assure you that rich people ain't your enemy they're actually helping the economy so this is why i'm saying that you need to get your mind right about money and about people that have money and people that um acquire money and addressing the misconception that rich people hardly ever spend their money and they don't have a life all they ever do is save i think it's so false yes you have to get yourself out of debt to initially build yourself up to a certain stage where you can live comfortably and in order to do that you need to cut back and probably cut back on a lifestyle that you're used to and a lifestyle that now isn't fab but all of this is temporary especially if you're doing it right and if you begin to invest and you begin to make your money work for you you guys need to go and watch my plan and purpose series where i was talking about doing certain things now sacrificing now to enjoy later all of this saving and getting yourself out of debt it's like something that needs to be done so that your future is better and so that when you get to that stage where you're not even worried about money like that yeah 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 i can do things you know like i said you want to get to the stage where money or affording things 
isn't like a concern for you. Paying bills, putting food on the table isn't worrying you. Your only concern is how you can help other people that are at a disadvantage, how you can help organizations and how you can help charities that are going out there and making a positive impact in the lives of people all around the world. That should be your concern. Your concern shouldn't be, how am I gonna get petrol into my car? Myth number seven is that giving is a loss. When you give, like I was saying earlier, you get back and you get back much more. So just check yourself. If you get angry when you have to kind of like part with your cash or you have to give maybe towards a charity or something, or you feel that you're losing money, then it's indicative of how you really feel about money. And it's not seen as a tool. You're probably seeing it as something a lot more closer to home, like so precious. So change the way you think about money and watch things begin to change for you. Um, Just as a side note, and also in line with my previous point, being charitable or giving instinctively helps helps you lose the grip you might want to hold onto or have on money. And this is something that a lot of successful people have grasped well. You need to be a giver, hence why many people that are natural givers are wealthy. It's just like one plus one is two. The eighth myth is making money is a sin. Now guys, remember that it's the love of money that's the root of all evil. It's not having money or money in itself. Remember that money is a tool. And if you think about it, it's people that tend to hold onto or hoard money in that sense. You can say that they're actually loving money because they are seeing it as something so precious that they can't let go of but it's actually life-giving when you release and yeah when you release when you give i keep saying it but it's true how do you know whether what you're doing is loving money or you're using it as a tool and i think um checking your motives is the first point of contact like if money is driving you if money or greed is your driving force like you want it because you want to live this lavish lifestyle and you want to have blah 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 not to say that you can't have a lavish lifestyle but if greed is what's fueling you and there isn't that higher purpose or higher calling be honest with yourself you think about it if that that isn't there or you're not thinking about that then and it's greed or maybe you grew up in poverty so like you're doing everything now to run away from that or not go back to that life that you had um that in itself can be indicative that you're loving money and money is a lousy master you should be the one controlling money and what it should be doing for you it shouldn't be the other way around anyway guys i'm gonna leave it there for now i hope you enjoyed it if you do share it with people that you think might need it don't stay ignorant to miss teachings and how you relate to money depends on your state of mind and your soul if you're feeding it negativity and negativity about money that's always gonna come out so yeah guys remember that it's one step at a time to becoming confident bye for now